brothers and sisters in Christ, chers frères et sœurs dans le Christ. Après la trahison et la mort de Judas, c'est Matthias qui est, que Dieu choisit comme apôtre. Matthias va entrer avec enthousiasme dans le grand mouvement d'évangélisation qui a suivi la résurrection et l'ascension du Christ. Il se joint aux onze autres apôtres pour annoncer le plan de Dieu pour toute l'humanité, un plan d'amour et de vie. Aujourd'hui, c'est à chacun et chacune de nous que le Christ adresse son appel à entrer dans le grand mouvement de la nouvelle évangélisation. Depuis notre baptême, il nous a choisis comme apôtres. Au cœur de notre monde, qui bafoue trop souvent l'amour et la vie, le Christ se cherche des collaborateurs et des collaboratrices, des gens qui soient prêts à se donner pour défendre la cause de la vie. Following the betrayal and the suicide of Judas, it was Matthias whom God chose as apostle to round out the number of the 12 apostles. Matthias took his part enthusiastically within the extraordinary evangelizing movement that took place after the resurrection and ascension of Christ. He joined the 11 to proclaim God's design for all of humanity, a plan for love, a plan for life. Today, the risen Lord Jesus, whom we celebrate at this Eucharist, addresses his appeal to each and every one of us to take our place in the marvelous movement of the new evangelization. From the moment of our baptism, he has chosen us to be his apostles, his ambassadors. At the very heart of our world, which too often scoffs at love and at life, Christ seeks out men and women to collaborate with him in his enterprise. He's looking for people ready to give themselves, to argue for, and to defend the cause of life. And that's why we have gathered here today in Ottawa. We have come here because we understand the urgency of the battle to plead the cause for truth, for life, and for the family. We firmly believe that the culture of death that surrounds us can never have the last word, for we know that Christ has already won the victory. Still, at this time in history, it is through us, the members of his church, his very own body, that he wishes to defend life. Christ is counting on us. Depuis 40 ans, notre pays a ouvert la porte à l'élimination des plus petits et des plus vulnérables parmi nous, des enfants à naître. À plus, plus de 3 millions d'avortements, il est temps de nous lever pour que cesse cette hécatombe. Il est temps de nous lever pour dénoncer ensemble l'élimination gratuite de nos frères et sœurs en humanité et pour proposer d'autres alternatives aux femmes enceintes en difficulté. Il est temps de sortir de, du dessert de l'indifférence. Comme le suggère l'Organisation catholique pour la vie et la famille, il nous faut, il nous faut rouvrir le débat public sur l'avortement au Parlement, dans les médias et dans nos communautés. Les sondages indiquent clairement qu'une majorité de Canadiennes et des Canadiens sera favorable à certaines restrictions à l'avortement. Un changement viendra seulement si nous assumons notre responsabilité sociale et si nous prenons la parole pour les enfants à naître. For 40 years now, 40 years today, our country has held open the door to the elimination of the little ones, the most vulnerable in our midst, children in the womb, not yet born. After more than three million abortions, the time has come to put an end to the slaughter of the innocents. It's time to rise up and to denounce together the gratuitous massacre of our brothers and sisters, our fellow human beings, and to propose alternatives to pregnant women in difficulty. It's time to leave the desert of our indifference. As the Catholic Office for Life and the Family suggested last week in its message, we need to reopen the debate on abortion in Parliament, in the media, and in communities all across this land. Polls tell us that a majority of Canadians would favor restrictions on abortion. But such a change will only take place if we, each one of us, assume our responsibility and speak up for unborn children. 
As committed citizens, too, we will soon be called to battle on another front in the cause of life. A bill that favors assisted suicide was introduced this week in the House of Commons. We should not be deceived by the packaging or the labeling. To speak of assisted suicide really means to speak sooner or later of euthanasia, of the killing of the aged and the infirm and the weak. We need to inform ourselves about the Church's teaching on this matter and the wisdom of the ages in order to take part with competence and credibility in the public debate that is soon to be unleashed. Above all, we need to give evidence of our love for life, to witness to it, because truly it is witnesses who will touch people's hearts today. Et si parfois nous sommes tentés par le découragement, rappelons-nous que le Christ est toujours présent à nos côtés pour nous consoler et nous soutenir. Il est notre meilleur ami et il nous, il nous donne rendez-vous dans sa parole, dans l'écriture que nous avons justement écouté, entendu. Je suis avec vous pour tous les jours jusqu'à la fin du monde. Il nous donne aussi rendez-vous dans l'Eucharistie, que nous célébrons cet hôtel, cette table d'Eucharistie, où il saisit nos vies pour l'offrir avec la sienne. Le Christ ressuscité se donne même à manger pour nous transformer en d'autres Christ. Avec sa vie qui coule alors dans nos veines, nous devenons capables de relever tous les défis et de bâtir une culture de la vie. If we're sometimes discouraged or tempted to give in to that struggle that we're facing, let us at those times calmly recall that Christ is always present with us and in us. He's at our side to comfort and to sustain us. He is our ever-present best friend, and he has given his word to us in the gospel, I am with you always until the end of time. He also has promised to come to us in this Eucharistic mystery that we're celebrating at the altar of the Lord, where he lays hold of our lives to unite them with his own. The risen one, the one who is beyond time and space and death, anything that can harm people, he gives himself to us as food to eat in order to transform us into likenesses of himself, into other Christs. With his life flowing in our veins as branches on a vine, the theme of last Sunday's Gospel, we are able to face, as the Apostle Matthias did, the challenges that confront us and to slowly but surely build a civilization of love. May God bless each one of us as we struggle to take our part in that new evangelizing movement. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>